Okay, well, in this lesson, we're going to introduce the radian measure as a unit of angles other than the degree unit. And we're going to discuss arcs and sectors and uh, segments. So if we were to first start with the radian measure, what is exactly a radian measure? If we look at this circle here, now, a radian measure, one radian, is in fact corresponding to an arc of length equal to the radius. Now, watch out here that it's the length of the arc that has to be equals to r, which means it's the distance from this point to that point, that distance should be equal to the radius. Now, whenever you have an arc, of length equal to the radius, the central angle corresponding to that arc would have a measure of one radian. Now, for example, here from this point all the way to this point, you have uh, two radii for the length of the arc. Therefore, the central angle has a measure of two radians. So, in fact, an angle of measure one radian has an intercepting arc of length equal to the radius. Okay, so now for the conversion formula, in order to be able to convert from uh, radian to degrees. Now, uh, as you can see here, I have this proportion here where it says pi radians corresponding to 180 degrees. Now, that is our reference point. But why is it that 180 degrees is the same as pi in radian or 3.14? Well, we know that uh, 180 degrees corresponds to half a circle. Now, this is 180. Now, what is the length of the arc corresponding to 180 degrees? Now, we know that a full circle has a circumference of 2 pi r. And the circumference is, in fact, the length of uh, the arc forming the whole circle. So if 360 degrees has a length corresponding to 2 pi r, it means that a full circle has a 2 pi radii along the circumference. So 360 degrees then corresponds to 2 pi radians. Therefore, consequently, 180 degree is equivalent to pi radians. So whenever you need to convert from radian to degrees or from degrees to radian, this is the proportion to use here. Pi radian corresponds to 180 degree, then whatever angle you have in radian should correspond to its corresponding angle in degrees. If you have x known, y unknown, you just choose that proportion in order to find y. And if you have y known and x unknown, you'd also use this proportion in order to find x. So over here, using that proportion or that conversion formula, you'd notice that one radian is in fact 180 degrees over pi, which is approximately 52 degrees. And one degree is pi over 180 radian. So if we were to move uh, forward to this, to the next example, where in part one they're asking us to convert from uh, uh, to convert 70 degrees to radian. Now, of course, you can always uh, use this proportion, where x over here, since x is above pi, then x is the angle in radian, and y is above 180, then y is the angle in degrees. But if you were not to memorize this proportion, all you have to do is just use the proportion that corresponds pi radian to 180 degrees, and just uh, use that proportion in order to find the angle you need. So over here, we know that 180 degrees corresponds to pi radian. So 70 degrees corresponds to 
what angle in radian. So if I were to just call this angle x in radian, then x would in fact be 70 pi over 180, which simplifies into 7 pi over 18 radian. Now, whenever you're working in radian, whenever it's possible, it's preferable to keep the angles in exact value uh, using uh, pi. So, however, now in part two, we need to convert 5 pi over 12 to uh, degrees. You can use the same proportion I've used here, but x, the unknown, would be the one in degrees, and below pi, you'd have 5 pi over 12, or you could just simply replace pi by 180, since pi gradient corresponds to 180 degrees. So over here, using your calculator to um, evaluate this, you would have 5 times 180 and divide it by 12, so that gives you 75 degrees. So 70 degrees is in fact equals to, uh, sorry, this is 75. So 75 degrees is in fact the same as uh, 5 by over 12 rat. I'm sorry about that. So it's 5 by over 12 rat. Okay, so converting from radian to degrees is in fact simple. All you have to do is just keep in mind that 180 degrees is equivalent to pi radians. Now let's just move over to the second part which discusses sectors and uh, segments of circles. Now over here if you were to look at the circle you have an angle theta here at the center with the corresponding arc AC. Now whenever we speak of an arc uh, intercepting a certain angle, now the arc intercepted inside uh, the angle is in fact the minor arc, while you also have the major arc AC, which is the one corresponding to the central angle that is outside uh, theta or 360 minus theta. Okay, however, over here, let's just see on this figure the difference between an arc, a sector, and a chord. So an arc is in fact lying along the circumference of uh, the circle. So the arc between A and B is the portion of the circumference between points A and B. However, a sector, a sector starts from uh, the center of the circle all the way to intercepting the corresponding arc and this whole portion of the circle would in fact be the sector. So the arc is a portion of the circumference, it's just the border of the circle. However, a sector is a portion of the whole uh, disk, if you want, corresponding to the circle. While a chord, a chord is a line or a segment, in fact. It's a segment connecting two points on uh, the circle, on the circumference of the circle. So the, car the chord is just a segment connecting two points on the circle, while the segment is the portion of the disc that lies between the chord and the arc on the circle. So this whole thing is the segment. It's the portion of the disc corresponding to the circle there that lies between a chord and an arc. So uh, these are uh, the definitions of arcs which could be minor and major arcs and sector, chord and segment. Now if we were to uh, find the length of arcs in areas of sectors, now the formulas really depend on whether the central angle is given in degrees or in radian. So, if we were to first start with whenever the angle is given in degrees, 
Now, for uh, over here, we've just discussed already that 360 degrees corresponds to the whole circumference because here we're speaking of the length of uh, the arc. So 360 degrees corresponds to all 2 pi r around the circumference. So L would in fact be the portion of the circumference that corresponds to the angle theta. So over here, you don't really have to memorize uh, this formula. All you have to do is just use the proportion every single time. So if 360 degrees corresponds to 2 pi r, then theta corresponds to which length of uh, the circle. And similarly for uh, the area of the sector, we know that this is the area of the sector corresponding to angle theta. And keep in mind here that the angle is given in degrees. So 360 degrees would actually correspond to the full area of the circle, which is pi r squared. So theta in degrees would actually correspond to which area. Similarly, you don't really have to uh, memorize uh, this formula. All you have to do is just keep in mind this proportion. So it's as if you're asking yourself if 360 degrees gives a full area of pi r squared, what portion of that area would actually correspond to uh, the angle theta? Now, whenever the angle is given in radians. Now, when the angle is given in radians, you could still use these proportion. So we know that over here, if we're looking for the length of the arc, we know that one radian corresponds to r units for the length of the corresponding arc. So that's a radian would correspond to which length. And using this proportion, you'd actually have L equals to R times theta. So if one radian corresponds to an arc of length R units, then theta radian would correspond to an arc of length R times theta because of this proportion here. And similarly for the uh, area of the sector. Now for the area of the sector here, instead of using 360 degrees, would in fact be using 2 pi rad because we're given the angle here in radian and 360 degrees is equivalent, is equivalent to 2 pi in radian. So if 2 pi rad corresponds to the whole area, which is pi r squared, then theta would correspond to which area? So over here, applying this proportion, we'd have that the area is equal to half theta times r squared, of course, here where theta is given in rat. So let's just put this into an example here. Uh, you'd notice that in these two examples, the angles are given in radians, so we will be using the formulas here where theta is in radian. So, we need to find the length of the arc and the area of the sector in this first example. So for the length of the arc, we know that the length, if this is L, the length is in fact R times theta. Okay, because again, I remind you that one radian corresponds to uh, R units, which in this case is 8 centimeters. So theta red would in fact correspond to which length, which by applying the proportion, it would in fact be r times theta over 1. So this is where this formula comes from. So r times theta, so it's in fact 8 times 3 pi over 4, which is 6 pi. And since this is a length, it's a distance, then it's the unit here is centimeters. You could just leave the exact value here. What, uh, however, regarding the area, the area of the sector here. Now, the area when the angle is given in radian is half r squared theta. You can always use the proportion 2 pi red. 2 pi, which corresponds to 360 degrees in radian, is in fact pi r squared. 
then theta would correspond to which area. So by applying the uh, proportion here, you'd end up with half r squared theta. So it's in fact half times 64 times 3 pi over 4. Now this is an area here, so 64 divided by 4 is 16, divided by 2 is an 8 times 3, that's a 24, so it's 24 pi centimeter squared. If you were to use your calculators to determine approximately how much that is, what you could do is, for example, 6 pi, 6 times uh, pi, which is 18.85 centimeters and it's the same for 24 it's 24 you multiply the one up by 4 so the area would be uh, 74.39 centimeters squared or you could just keep them in exact value it doesn't really matter anyway <clears throat> If we move on to example two, we need to find the area of the shaded region. Now, as you can see, the shaded region corresponds to uh, the segment formed by um, uh, the angle given, 2 pi over 3. I remind you that a segment is the portion of the circle or the disk that lies between the arc and uh, the chord, AB. Okay, so in order to find uh, the area of the segments, just the shaded region, in fact, what you could do here is find the area of the whole sector, the, the area of the whole sector, and subtract from it the area of this isosceles triangle. So regarding the area of the whole sector, so the area of the whole sector is half r squared theta minus, I need to subtract the area of uh, the triangle. Now this triangle is in fact isosceles because OB and OA are both radii of the circle. So over here I have the two sides OA and OB and I have the angle that lies between them so I can use uh, the formula of the area that contains sine of the angle multiplied by half of the product of the sides which we took in the previous lesson so it's half times 6 times 6 times sine of 2 pi over 3 so over here it's half, uh, that's a 36 times 2 pi over 3 minus. Now this is a 36 over 2, so this is an 18 times. Now sine of 2 pi over 3, you could use your calculators to actually uh, determine that. Later on, we'll see how we could determine uh, the exact values of such remarkable angles which in fact is square root 3 over 2 so as for the time being you could just use your calculators to find that okay so the area here would in fact be so this is 12 divided by 4 divided by 2 is a 6 times 2 that's a 12 so this is a 12 pi here minus 9 square root of 3 now this is the exact uh, value of uh, the area you can determine it in approximate value okay so over here we would in fact have 12 pi minus okay minus 9 uh, what was it square root of 3 so that would be 22.11 uh, so which is approximately 22.11 centimeter squared <clears throat> 